All right, folks. We're back again with the E39, and uh, as we can hopefully hear and see, um, we're basically once again hooked up with our Arduino into the uh, crankshaft position sensor input on the uh, ECU, and we've got our uh, camshaft position signals disconnected. Now, this particular Arduino, uh, we're sending our signal out on the orange and green wire there from uh, Digital Pin 10. We've got an input uh, coming in just via that resistor on Digital Pin 2. And we've got power for the Arduino. Uh, just being supplied from a permanent 12 volt feed that I just tapped off at the DME. So, once again, we have our laptop and uh, got there, we're about 735 RPM or so uh, on the actual um, tack. So, if we go inside the vehicle. Uh, we should see that that's replicated on the actual tachometer, which indeed it is. So we're happy. And uh, I'm not sure if it's going to come out on the sound, but we can certainly hear the injectors firing and all, and all that kind of thing. So, okay, a little bit different from the last time uh, in that I got a bug out of the software uh, that was causing a uh, crankshaft position um, DTC to be set uh, because I just uh, I didn't have the code timings uh, right in the actual software. It was giving a I think it was it was, it was giving a the wrong kind of a gap. Now, okay, so now, so we got all that cleaned up. So what this software in the Arduino at the minute is is actually doing for me is it's interpreting um, a signal it's been sent from this uh, just a standard signal gen which is pumping out a uh, 5 volt square wave and that is representative of a 2 pulse per revolution um, sensor tack sensor uh, that's ultimately going to be going on to uh, the tail shaft or tail end, I should say, of our traction motor here. So this will enable me to run a normal tack sensor on the actual motor and actually in software convert that two pulse per rev signal into the 60 minus two uh, pulse train that we need to send to the uh, DME to convince it that the engine is running. So right now, the conversion process isn't perfect. I'm still trying to work a few bugs out of it, uh, but it's mostly operational. Um, and I'll just give a quick little demo of that. I'm, I'm just going to adjust the uh, frequency knob on the signal gener generator. And uh, I'll just try and just uh, get a close up on that there. And just tweak up the frequency. You can hear the engine revving up. Oh. There she goes. Revving all the way up. Up to 3,500 RPM. I have to see if that's being duplicated in the actual vehicle. Nah. Indeed it is. For some reason there now the injectors have cut off. So let's actually, while we're here, see what that's about. Uh, maybe 
maybe it's just not getting air mass or something or it's not happy about something but let's have a quick look seeing as we're here so errors uh, read errors so the current errors are uh, air mass flow problem with that, inlet cam signal implausible and oxygen uh, sensor is not too happy with anyway so let's clear those errors so it's just going back to the uh, implausible signal on the cam so it's not too unhappy with, with me I would say it's in overrun cutoff for some reason let's have a uh, back to our live data. Overrun off, overrun cut off on. There we are. So, a little bit unhappy with me. So, let's dial her back a notch. And we're back in business. Probably due to the throttle position. Yeah, that's what it is. It's the throttle position. So, if I have her up on a high RPM and I were to actually get into the car, uh, let me see. I can squeeze myself in. Oh, I'm getting too old for this. So, there's my, my 3000 RPM. If I give her some throttle, yeah, there we go. Throttle closed. So, when I actually press the throttle, uh, we get our. Uh, our signal. So there we go folks. We can now translate um, from a uh, we can translate from a two pulls per ev tack signal which you can pretty much very easily generate uh, from any Certainly some of the more popular EV motors have got sensors on them that'll do all that. Um, and we can easily duplicate it here uh, in software. Now, one other thing that I just want to quickly demonstrate is this. Uh, if we go to our revs a minute here, it's on the display. The problem is that below a certain RPM, the mill light will come on um, on our dash typically it's below it's about 250 to 220 rpm that actually happens now why would that be a problem uh, it's certainly not a problem from any kind of a practical sense the difficulty is that uh, when the car will have to be tested it has to go through in this country uh, something called the Na National Car Test or NCT. Part of that test is that the mill light must com come on when the key is turned to the on position but then go out when the, when the engine starts. Now the problem is that when the motor would drop below a certain RPM the mill light would come on and when the car would be actually stationary in the testing station, st station stationary. Okay, um, we'd have a, we'd have some, we'd have, we could have a bit of a problem there. So, obviously, the fact that we're doing the conversion in software means that I can set a minimum RPM. Now, what I've done in this case is I've set it to 200 RP RPMs. Now, so if I go ahead, and I turn off the signal gen. We should see that we actually managed to keep an idle RPM uh, being fed to the, the DME. So that means that the mill light will not come on and I can actually program that uh, to any setting uh, that I so require. So that just uh, greatly helps um, 
with uh, these things uh, to actually have the conversion done in software. So that's it folks, just another little update on our uh, E39 project. Um, got some more components coming in, lots of other things happening, but I've, got, I've just got to uh, just try and uh, just get these little bits out of the way first before we do anything else. So that's about it, and uh, we'll be back soon, hopefully. Um, got a few more things to organise, and then we'll eventually be looking at getting this uh, planet-destroying heap of crap out of here and getting a motor in there instead. So stay with us.